Let's look at this problem based on quadratic equations. A rectangle of, has length 4 cm greater than its width. Find its width given that its area is 96 cm squared. So this is a word problem. We need to convert it into an equation and solve it. Now, when you don't have much given, it'll be helpful to just start off with a simple diagram. So a rectangle. Now you can call maybe this left side as width and the top as the length. Since we don't know the width or the length specifically, you can call the width x and the, the problem says the length is 4 centimeters greater and so this is x plus 4. We are given the area which is 96 centimeters squared. Now we do know that uh, area is width times length in this case x times x plus 4. The area is given so we enter that, that value. Now when multiplying be careful to use the FOIL principle as we learned and so 96 will be equal to x squared plus 4x. This is a quadratic equation because it's got x squared in it. However, it's not in standard form. What is standard form? An equation of the form e x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now, an easy way to convert any quadratic equation to standard form is to move all the terms to one side, leaving 0 on the other side. In this case, Let's prefer to move the 96 over to the other side by subtracting it on both sides. So that gives us 0 is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 96. It might be convenient to write this as x squared plus 4x minus 96 equals 0. Okay, We have just you know, swapped the left and right sides as we can always do. If a equals b, then b equals a. Now we need to solve this equation. So there are a couple of methods you could use. You could use the method of factorization, for example. Let's start with that method and then go on to look at another method if it's possible. So in any case, we need to write the values of the coefficients a, which in this case is 1, b, 4, and c, minus 96. Let's use the product and sum method, which we will do on the left side here. So the product is a times c, which is 1 times minus 96 or minus 96. The sum is b, in this case, 4. Now we have to find two numbers, which when multiplied give minus 96 and which when added give 4. As you may imagine, those two numbers need to be somewhat, you know, close to each other, or at least have a difference of 4. One way to find the factors when you have a larger number than is convenient is to take that number, say 96, and divide it repeatedly by, let's say, small prime factors, like 2 or 3 or 5 and so on. So 2 divides 96. There you go. 2 goes. And again. And again. And that's all. So in other words, 96 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Right? So these are the factors that make up 96. Now it's possible to group these factors in different ways to give 96. For example, 96 can be taken as 2 times the remaining part, or 2 times 2 times the remaining part, and so on. So let's, let's say we'll choose these three as one group, and for the other group, let's choose the other three. So in the first group, we've got 6. In the second group, we've got 
12. I'm sorry, in the first group, it's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, not 6. The second group is 12. Now, the interesting thing is that here you see that the difference between 8 and 12 is 4, and that might be of some use to us. So let's see if we can work that out. Okay. So let's write those factors down here. 8 times 12. But to get minus 96, this should be minus 8 times 12. And of course, minus 8 plus 12 is 4. Now what's the next thing to do? The next thing to do is to use these two factors to split this middle term 4. Because after all, minus 8 plus 12 is 4. So let's rewrite that, that equation in terms of those two factors. So it's x squared minus 8x plus 12x minus 96 equals 0. So you see, all we've done is we have split 4x into two parts. The next step will be to consider the first two, the first two of those. So let's get that to work. Okay, let's consider the first two and the last two. Okay. Yes, so here's the first two. And then you consider the last two. And factorize these two. For the first two terms, the common factor is x. x multiplies x minus 8 to give x squared minus 8x. For the second two terms, the common factor is 12. 12 will multiply x and minus 8 to give 12x minus 96. And we retain the equal to 0. Now you'll notice here that we have x minus 8 as a common term on both sides. So when you have that, you can take x minus 8 as a common factor between the two terms on both sides, and x minus 8 will multiply x plus 12 to give the above quantity, and that's equal to 0. Now, we can use the null factor law to determine the value of x, because as you know, in the null factor law, if you have two terms, or more actually, a and b, when multiplied giving 0, then that simply implies either a equals 0 or b equals 0, right? This is very logic and logical and easy to understand. So in our example, it's easy to see that x minus 8, the first term, should be equal to 0, or x plus 12, the second term, is 0. This is very easy to solve. So x will be equal to 8, or x will be equal to minus 12. So we've actually solved the equation. Now, because the length cannot be negative, we need to choose the appropriate quantity. And so the value of x is 8. But let's actually continue, because just in case you are looking for an alternative way of doing this problem, then let's do this by the quadratic formula method. So let's uh, try to solve it by that quadratic formula method on the right side. Okay, so here we go. Let's draw a line and solve it on the right side with the quadratic formula method. Okay, so let's say we're going to solve the same equation x squared plus 4x minus 96 equals 0 by the quadratic formula method. All right. So what is the quadratic formula, right? Let's do that. But first, let's ensure 
that we know the values of A, B, and C. We already found those out, but there's no harm writing them down again in our new example here. So we have A equals 1, B equals 4, and C equals minus 96. The quadratic formula is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the whole divided by 2a. Let's substitute x equals minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 96 the whole divided by 2 times 1. That's minus 4 plus or minus the square root of, and now you can just use a calculator to get the inside parts. You get 400. And at the bottom we have 2. The square root of 400 is fairly easy. You may know that, or you can use a calculator. The answer for that is 20. And so this is minus 4 plus or minus 20 by 2. So you see there are two values that are possible in, in a quadratic formula method. The two answers are x equals minus 4 plus 20 over 2 or x equals minus 4 minus 20 over 2. The first answer gives you 8 and the second answer gives you minus 12. You notice that these are the same answers that we got by using the other method as well. And so you can use the method that is most convenient for you or the one that you are most familiar with.